My favorite soup as a child was chicken vegetable with jalapenos. My mom made that soup and it was tasty and it was fragrant and it had a serious kick. <laughs> and when I had the flu, my mom accomplished a minor miracle. Bowl of that soup, kiss on my forehead, mop off my brow, tuck off my blanket. Perfect, absolute healing. I still smile when I think of that memory. Mom passed away last year, but somewhere she smiles just as well. Did you think of a similar memory? Probably with a bowl of chicken noodle soup, not so spicy. <laughs> think about this amazing action. It's simple and it's caring. What I experienced was not health care, it's care of my health. There was no insurance cards, there was no pre-authorizations, and my mom never asked me for a copay. <laughs> she never said, put this card into the chip reader and sign here, or no soup for you. <laughs> now, I want you to think about our healthcare system. I think I lost contact with half the audience now, so. <laughs> Did you think of the word complicated and difficult? I see people nodding. When I enter our healthcare system, I often enter into a confusing maze. And the national discourse on this subject is one large shouting match. Unplanned result of progress, I'm not sure. But I am sure of one point. Caring about a person's health is about two people. The person who's sick and the person who wishes to heal. Technology, medicines, buildings of hospitals, they're all supporting features. Healthcare is about listening. It's careful listening to the needs and wishes of each patient, about empowering that patient and turning their wishes into action. It's about their respect and their dignity. And it's an interesting two-way street. The person who's sick heals when you feel better, but the person who's giving care gains satisfaction and feels better about themselves. So what do you want from your healthcare system when you're sick? Simplicity, right? Well, here's a very simple secret. Just start listening to the requests and needs of well-informed patients and their healthcare providers. So I'm going to tell you a story. It's my story. But I'm going to start with a question. So how do you take your medicine? You get a tablets and a glass of water, swallow, and you're done, right? It's very simple. But if you're a person who has a swallowing disorder, or if you suffer from Parkinson's disease, the simple action is going to be very problematic. If you have many, many children, people who have trauma and being fed with feeding tubes, tablets pose a problem for them as well. So, if you are a caregiver for such a patient, what are you going to do if there's no liquid medicine available? You're going to improvise, and you're going to do the best you can. So there you are, two, ta two spoons, a uh, moderate pestle, garlic press, crushing tablets, finding a suitable liquid, applesauce, orange juice, you mix the stuff together, and you dose your loved one. Tastes bad, you still make sure they get the entire dose. Quite the struggle, right? Imagine doing this several times a day, every day, say for your grandparents. There are some pharmacists who will make liquid medicines for you, but even they will pull out that mortar and pestle and grind it and make a, a tablet mess before they make a liquid medication. It's not exactly 21st century cutting edge technology, and the problem needs a solution. So my background is that of a physical chemist and a pharmacist, and I wanted to find a solution for these patients. In our field at this juncture, the tendency is to leap forward and start innovating and doing what we think is best. I didn't take this pathway. I actually took a pathway of careful listening. 
So before I became an entrepreneur, I worked in the pharmaceutical industry in research and development. Interesting point. We worked very diligently as scientists, but not often did we interact with the persons whose needs we were wanting to meet. So we made many assumptions. Most of them were right, but some were not so correct. So the pathway I took was one of slowing down, pausing, starting to interact with the stakeholders. So these are pharmacists and nurses, physicians, parents, children. I asked a lot of questions and carefully listened for answers to get some guidance on how to make this process better. It's a really enriching and amazing process. What I learned and got was thoughtful answers and caring input and a lot of kindness. Overwhelming theme, keep it simple, focus on the patient. So if you're a pharmacist, what I heard was, I like high quality products, my personal personnel should be safe, and I want to have no equipment cleaning. Patients wanted products that tasted really good, and Parkinson's patients told me, flavors that don't make me salivate, small volumes, it makes it easier for me to take my medicine. Parents and nurses, I want proper withdrawal volumes, not too large, not too small. And I want adult flavors. I don't want to dose an adult patient bubble gum and cherry day after day, every day, <laughs> right? If you're a nurse, you want a product that goes easily through a feeding tube, especially for small children. What did I get out of listening and paying attention to all of these people? I got a well laid out caring roadmap for my innovation. I now know where to go towards. So I do need one more ingredient, a team of skilled and motivated technical collaborators who will help me make this innovation go. So from chemical engineering, we took a process that's called wet milling. You go to a pharmaceutical company, it's done in 100-gallon tanks by large machines. We, we miniaturized it and put it into a plastic bottle. If you are a pharmacist, now you can take tablets, water, make a smooth mixture of medicine right in that bottle. We are flavor experts who've selected the right flavors. Chocolate, caramel, nut rum for adults, and vanilla, orange cream for children, a special peppermint for bitter medications. From a hospice nurse, I learned that if you have a patient with dementia, a pleasant aroma is more important than taste. So we have a formula called Bananas Foster with extra vanilla that makes it pop, there's a blast of a smell when you open the bottle. So what happened from all of this innovation and collaboration? So if you're a pharmacist now, you can compound in one bottle. You, the medicine stays in there, you hand that same bottle to your, your patient or caregiver to take home, meets your needs. If you're a patient, you're gonna get a high quality, tasty, personalized medicine. And now you can take your medication. You see that caring map that I got from the stakeholders? that converted into a technically pleasing innovation. So that is a melody. It's between caregivers and patients and inventors. And I tell you, it got all of us a lot of satisfaction. So what have I learned from this process that I can tell you about improving our healthcare system? If we are going to improve our healthcare system, we have to have a collective shift in the way we think as a nation. You have to focus on the patient and think about their needs, their well-reasoned needs. It's care of health, it's not health care. In the end, if we're gonna make our healthcare system better and simple, three points. Simplicity and listening and caring. It's exactly like the amazing contents of a bowl of your mom's hot fragrance soup.